YouTube, what is up? It is your boy Benji, and we are back balling. Yo, who man is this? Hey man, y'all said we done with the 90s. Jimmy High Roller got something to say about that. Y'all cook me because I said Jordan, just because y'all saying Jordan didn't have a left hand, that the 90s was trash. I said y'all got to come with some more heat. And I'm someone who is on y'all's side. I think the basketball has evolved at such a crazy pace that we haven't been showing enough love. But Jimmy High Roller got a big long video to talk about what is really going on. So we're gonna check it out. Brothers, we are in the midst of a civil war. The age old civil debate of war. past versus present right. has reached critical mass and sides have been taken. A revolution is taking place and we're losing good men. Old school versus new school. Back in the day versus modern day. A story as old as time itself. I tried to ignore this blood bath, but just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, it all got so much worse. We done with the 90s. Film of NBA games from <laughs> the 80s and 90s coming to light, showing that the good old days were in fact Whoa, that was garbage. Not that good. This whole time, the punishing defense of legend was actually just a bunch of plumbers camping out in the paint looking for someone to hack. Shots clanking off the backboard, players running around aimlessly, wreaking havoc. And worst of all, Michael Jeffrey Jordan, the supposed greatest basketball player of all time, didn't even have a left hand. What is going on? Have we been lied to about basketball in the 80s and 90s? No, I what think these really are just done with that era of who? Like. He's probably going to get to, it's very easy to put together a compilation of bad play. Same way we could do that today. You could, you could probably go watch of tonight's NBA games. Go put together a compilation of terrible basketball. Oops. Or are we being deceived by low lights, misinformation, and cherry-picked clips? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I think I've got an answer. Talk and some of y'all ain't going to like it. Today's video is sponsored by SeatGeek. The NBA season is a few years like You've seen well thought out video essays, hard hitting analysis, testimonies from past and present players talking about their experience in the league and how it's changed over the years. And none of those things managed to do what these five simple words have done in uh, just a week. It's Soon so enough, crazy, the clips man. came rolling in of players from that era dribbling off their feet, throwing up air balls, and putting together moves that you might see at your local high school's JV game. So, for whatever it's worth, here is my long-winded take on this whole discussion. About mm -mm -mm. the tapes. I want to begin by saying what this discourse has taught me more than anything else is that NBA fans today never actually took the time to go back and watch games of the past. Right, 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 Brothers, right. I have been harping on this for years, begging for fans of the game, whether you are new or have been watching for years, to just go back and watch full games. Not right. highlights, not clips, full length games right. of eras from the past. And after seeing this discussion devolve into where it is today, it is clear to me that most people never take the time. I'm seeing countless fans have this sort of awakening as they're watching films of these old games as if the footage was buried or lost mm -hmm. and it's finally being unearthed for the world to see. It's been right here on YouTube for the past 15 years. You mean to tell me the same fans who try- NBA does the throwback classics all the time. I'm in with yeah, a full blown thesis on the GOAT debate. Never spared the time to even watch the games they were referring to. I guess that does explain a lot. Now I'd like to think I'm somewhere in the middle on this whole discussion. I have said on multiple occasions that players in today's NBA are simply more skilled than players of the past, which right. has resulted in bigger stat lines and higher point totals than right, ever right. before. It's not the defense that has gotten worse, it's the offense that has gotten better. Right. You know, that whole spiel. But I also have an appreciation for the greats that came before and how incredible some players of past eras were. In mm -hmm. fact, I almost feel like I'm hallucinating seeing this 90s basketball slander campaign unfold in front of my eyes. It feels like everyone's perception on the age old debate changed literally overnight. I know that's not the case, but after seeing all of this play out, it sure feels that way. But today, I'm not just going to show you some cherry picked clips or unhinge this narrative even further. I'm going to show you real film, real data, and proof of how we might actually be done with the 80s and 90s. And of course, if Michael Jordan really had no left hand. 
Spoiler, he did. Yeah. Hold on, man. I gotta... Hold on. It's only a kick, a little hard work. It's only a jump. What are you talking about? Now, I have been an Absolutely. advocate for the modern players are better than players of the past movement for quite some time now. Right. In fact, as crazy as it is for younger fans to say Michael Jordan was trash, it's just They're as crazy. absurd for older fans to say the game hasn't evolved and gotten better over the last 30 years. Because Ooh. that's all this debate really is. Young fans versus old fans, or fans that watched this versus fans that are watching this. Right. But objectively, players today are much better than they were in the 80s and even the 90s. Specifically, the lower end of the talent pool in the NBA today is vastly better than it was in the past. Okay. I think great players would be great in any era, but with the spacing, the shot making, the emphasis on offense as opposed to defense has made the depth across the NBA today just way ahead of where it was in the 80s and the 90s. There was, without exaggeration, guys in the NBA throughout the 80s and 90s that were no on way, NBA just still, rosters no way, just, still just to accumulate fouls and sit in the paint and be big. Some I agree. of these players were offensively inept, and I that agree. was okay because their role was not to create offense. But in today's NBA, where offense reigns supreme, there is no room for these players. Now, you could and should go back and watch film of games, not highlights, from this era and see just how limited the skill sets of some of these players were. The shot making, for the most part, was limited to set jumpers, slashers coming downhill for layups, and big men trying to muscle their way to a bucket down low in the midst of what appears to be a wrestling match. Catch a player off guard with a double team, and they immediately pick up their dribble. Simple things like guards turning their back to the basket 20 feet out instead of creating space off the dribble. Even players looking down at the ball while trying to get out on a fast break was very common in this era. And these aren't lowlights or cherry-picked incidences. This is just what the game looked like 35 years ago. But even without film, nearly every metric suggests modern players are more capable of players in the past. Free throw percentage was worse, three point percentage was worse, turnover percentage was higher, they used to shoot more free throws but still ended up with far less points. Now, this is not to say that this era of hoops was trash. That's just disingenuous and flat out wrong. These were the best players in the world at the time. It was just simply not as good as what it is today. Right. But maybe there's another layer to this that needs to be factored in to really understand why these players were not as skilled as the players of today. Talk to me. Now, despite this being a very relevant topic, Yes! I know what he's about to get into. Yes. 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 Absolutely. And this is what I think is actually hindering the WNBA right now. So I'll let him explain and then I'll come back. Topic for years, the idea of rule changes and how these changes have affected the game still remain a mystery. It's all the care? idea of rule now, despite this being a very relevant topic for years, the idea of rule changes and how these changes have affected the game still remain a mystery to some. Players were a product of their era and the rules of their era. The first step to discovering greats of the past is to watch film of Brothers, their play. The, the next ball. step is to gather and understand brothers. the context of the film you are watching. When you see a six foot nine inch Magic Johnson go flying down the court with what looks like kind of a stiff dribble, you may think the man has no bag. But my friends, Magic Johnson did have a bag, but the rules in place at the We're time only allowed that. him to reach so far into it before he got called for every violation in the rule book. Consider the fact that any move where your hand wasn't completely on top of the basketball was considered a carry. No zero steps, no gather steps. You get two steps and anything more was called a travel. No backward shuffles to create separation. No lunging into players to draw easy fouls. Here's a clip of Danny Ainge hitting Kevin McHale with a hezzy in the mid 80s. And the man thinks he just witnessed witchcraft. But when practice sessions were completed, some of the most competitive competition began. Oh, no, 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 no,
doing moves that are very typical and allowed in 2024. 90% of the moves you see today, the very method most players generate their offense would be called for some sort of violation 40 or 30 or even 20 years ago. And this isn't just some cop out or excuse as to why these players of the past weren't doing this stuff. The rule changes are real, documented pieces of NBA history. You can literally look them up. The game got looser, players grew right, up right, and right. shaped their game around these looser rules, right. and now they have free reign to let their basketball bag run wild. But that's kind of the point. Players of the past didn't grow up practicing 25 footers. They didn't work on a dozen moves to create separation. They played in offensive systems that focused on the team, the collective, right. schemes and sets that resembled something closer to college basketball, where ISO mm -hmm. possessions were few and far in between. So they never developed an arsenal to counter these situations. The rules of the time limited their game, which resulted in them having a more limited skill set than players today. If Larry Bird grew up with a three-point line, he might have been the greatest long-range shooter ever, but he didn't. Right. And as a result, he didn't shoot a lot of threes and he wasn't as efficient as the best shooters today. We can sit here and assume these players of the past might be as capable as players today if they were playing under the same rules and conditions, but they didn't. And I don't think we should assume that. The fact is they played in a different time and they became a product of that time. But that's not to say the game was trash back then, or that the superstars of these eras couldn't compete in today's league. This is why I stopped shopping on Amazon, and you should too. Don't spend another dime on Amazon until you watch this first. What? Now, as time goes by, I think it's easy to forget just how long ago 1980 was. 44 years ago, if my math is correct, okay. which is in fact a very long time ago. In 1985, Magic Johnson won an NBA title, Larry Bird won the league MVP, and Michael Jordan won Rookie of the Year. That was 39 years ago from today, which is the same exact amount of time that has passed from that 1985 season to the year the NBA was founded in 1946. Yeah, Look at these clips. Do you think these players could compete with the likes of Bird, Magic, and Jordan? Let me answer that for you. No, but take the best players of the 80s it's and real. 90s the and could real. they compete in today's league? Absolutely. Give these guys some credit. Watching this today is the equivalent of watching this in the 80s. And yet- Yeah, but that's this, this the, the point that I was getting to is we talk about evolution in the game, and a lot of people are, a lot of people are, are, are act obtuse to that. But that, that's not a thing that happened. Like you said, if at the time when Iverson was coming into the league and being a scoring point guard, it was viewed as a no-no. People were like, is this guy insane? Why is a six-foot guy trying to create the generate the offense, get it to a big man, get it to a wing? And so it was almost unheard of. And that's when you had, I think, the emergence of guys during that time, like Iverson, uh, Stevie Francis, uh, White Chocolate, Stephon Marbury, guys that were coming out and doing their thing, Ray for Alston. If Ray for Alston would have came out today, I mean, he could have been a better player. Let's say, let's just say, for example, Iverson. Let's say Stephon Marbury would have came out today. Now these guys would have been, pfft, what? They said, with, with an offense that let them pit pat the ball for 24 seconds in the shot clock? Yeah, they'd be crazy. Those guys, they were limited by their coaches and players at the time because they had a game that was more flashy and offensive, one-on-one uh, -on -one motivated. Nowadays, with the fast pace and, and the flexibility of the guards being able to create offense 30 feet away from the basket, bro, those guys would be ridiculous right now. But at the time, like you said, that, that, like the coaches weren't letting that happen. The coaches weren't letting that swing. Had Marbury, Iverson, all these guys came into the game, instead of in the late 99s, Late 90s, if they would have came in the late 80s, boom, career obsolete. They wouldn't have lasted because his coach wouldn't have let them play. And that's why I was bringing the point to say the WNBA, I think, is in that period where, like I said, the, the league is still fresh and they're still stuck in this, this is the way the game should be played mindset. And I think that is really what is hurting them when it comes to ticket sales and opportunities because we have players that are coming – and, and pulling game from the men, from the current men's game and transitioning that to the women's game. So it's like 
at the, at this time, it's, it'd probably be demonized. Kalen Clark, Juju, these kids that are coming in with offensive-minded games that can create their own offense and are, are essentially the focal point of their team's offense from the guard position, I think at this point is a no-no in the, in the WNBA, and that's why we aren't necessarily seeing that uh, development in the game where, where, where we probably saw it at one point in the men's game. He'll break it down, I'm sure, better than I can, though. This product is vastly closer to the basketball we see today than this product was to what fans were witnessing in the 80s. Right, in right, fact, right, right. we can use different... There was probably people at this time that were looking at them like, what kind of, what are they doing? The game was way better back then, back 10, 15 years ago. And then these guys were probably like, yo, those guys were scrubs. They were plumbers superstars as sort of a cross-generational measuring stick to see just how stiff the competition has been over the right. years. Larry and Magic played Michael, who played Kobe, who played LeBron, who has played the players of today. And nowhere down this timeline was there any real jump or fall off in production or level of competition from one era to the next. Right. Each era had their stars. Those stars crossed paths with stars of other eras, and no one era was clear cut ahead of the other. If the 80s were so bad, then why did players of the 90s have to wait for those guys to get old and retire to have a shot at winning? And if the 90s were so bad, then why did players of the 2000s not win until those guys retired? Yep. We don't need to- It's very easy to look back at everything with hindsight. To assume that adjacent eras could compete with one another because we actually saw it. MJ struggled with some of the guys that came right. before him. Shaq struggled against Hakeem and Kobe struggled against MJ. LeBron struggled against guys like Duncan and Dirk. And players of today have struggled to get past some of the older players in the league who are a right. product of the previous era. Now, what we shouldn't do is jump three or four eras at a time, ignoring entire decades of evolution and saying mm -hmm. the game back then was better or even as good as it is today. At a certain point, the knowledge and wisdom that comes from actually witnessing decades of NBA history like some older fans have, become skewed and watered down by nostalgia and a generational bias. Superstars are superstars because their game transcends the era they played in, but they also played in an inferior league. These two ideas are not mutually exclusive. And although generational talents of the past would do just fine today, this same logic does not apply to the vast majority of the league throughout the 80s and 90s. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. Yo, I cannot believe these shorts are I'm getting like hit with the ass, boy. Oh, look at the shorts funny. I used to wear to the gym. Now look at the Fabletics. So if the 80s were inferior to today's league and the 90s were inferior as well, when did the game. NBA become not trash? Right. Well, it depends on how you look at it. Ironically, I think there's a pretty clear distinction to the skill set of players before Michael Jordan hit his peak and after. For example, the early 90s and late 90s, although being in the same decade, were massively different in play style and skill set. Right, right, right. Think for a second about the fact that Magic Johnson was still in his prime in the early 90s and Allen Iverson was entering his prime in the late 90s. Exactly. In less than 10 years, basketball became a massively different game. Like By the late saying. 90s, the players who grew up watching Jordan fly through the He's air and my mind. defenses were in the league and were reshaping the role that perimeter players played right. guys like kobe bryant alan iverson ray allen stefan marbury grant hill tracy mcgrady vince Carter, just said. all these guys came into the league around the same time and were products of what they saw mj do throughout his career players with right. a skill set that more closely resembles what because all it takes is a pioneer and somebody will take upon that and build upon that well it's, it's like in anything in life when uh jobs came out with the iphone smartphone we could we now we've seen plenty of uh renditions of that that have grown and we've seen uh, other companies kind of mimic and do their own thing as well. And then since then you have applications that are built on, you know, for smartphones, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we see things grow and evolve because it took just somebody to pioneer something. Same thing in sports. I don't know why people act like that's an impossibility. What we see today than it did to the skill sets of players of the 80s. Shout out to High Roller. 90s. This is where I think most fans might make the distinction of when the league really took a leap, not in competitiveness, but rather play style. You can go back and watch these guys play, and it's not too different than watching an NBA game today. 
Or you can point to the shift in play style that happened in the late 2010s. After mm. Steph Curry redefined what makes a great championship caliber player and right. the league adjusted to this new three point heavy perimeter focused style of basketball. Right. Similar to Jordan, the kids who watched what Steph was doing in the mid 2010s emulated that style of play, tailored their games to it and are mm. now in the league doing things that only Steph could do a decade ago. So if we're done with the 80s and 90s, where can we look back and no longer apply this air attacks on these players? I think most fans would agree that the turn of the century is where the modern era of hyper-skilled players began. You can say objectively that this era was not trash, and most players of this generation would oh be just gosh. fine in today's league. But if that is the case, then modern NBA fans are holding a ticking time bomb, and they might not even know it. Talk to me. When we are older and a new generation of NBA fans say, claim yeah, our favorite say. players, the guys we grew up watching are not as good as the players of the future, what will you have to say? Right now, there is no one in the world who can shoot like Steph Curry. But inevitably, there will be. And eventually, there will be many players who can shoot like him. His records will fall, his percentages won't look as good through the lens of 2040, and although his legacy will be cemented, his actual game will be put into question. And based on the arguments I'm hearing today on why past players were trash, we will have nothing to say no, yeah. that will change their minds. We know that Curry was the first to do what he's doing. He is a pioneer of the modern mm -hmm. NBA. We have context to back up our claims. Mm -hmm. But if we aren't willing to hear older fans out today, what makes us think younger fans will hear us out in the future? Mark my words. There will be a day when young fans will go back, watch film of LeBron, and say he couldn't compete with players of the future. In fact, it's already happening. Fans saying Not he yet. has no bag. Younger yeah. players putting up bigger numbers than he ever did. Skill sets a bit deeper with games that look more polished. It's all fun and games now to crack jokes about past eras. But our day will come too, and it ain't gonna be pretty. But Unk, Giannis No Kobe. cap though, I, I understand why a lot of these dudes, why you can get into such war in the barbershop talk when it comes to sports because a lot of these dudes, they, this is how they grew up, bro. This is, they've grew, grown an attachment and a passion towards these players and these play styles because like he said, the way you're talking about Jordan is the way a lot of people grew up watching LeBron. The way you talk, talk about LeBron is the way a lot of people grew up watching Curry. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see down the line. Like these kids that grew up watching Wemben Yama, how they're going to talk about the game. You run and dunk. Your era was trash. Y'all had a dude who couldn't get two feet off the ground running the whole league. Right, you can right, scramble right. to pull up clips and show the numbers, but their minds will already be made up. This is why I think it is so important to have genuine, thought out discourse about the game if you're truly a fan of it. Right. But to all of the older fans out there, you don't have real fans. You kind of started this whole thing. For nah. years, we heard y'all badmouth modern players. It's very Saying true. the league is soft. Players today couldn't compete back then. Back in my day, real men played the game. Y'all cannot be mad that some fans are done with the 80s and 90s when y'all never even gave modern basketball a chance. Sure, a lot of yeah. fans never took the time to go back and watch the greats of the past, but let's be honest for a second. Older fans don't watch games today. They catch a stray clip on Facebook of LeBron flopping and like an echo chamber of disgruntled old men, they just start firing away in the comments agreeing with one another. Y'all ask for this. I've been watching the NBA also. since the mid 2000s. Kobe, D Wade, McGrady, Iverson, Shaq, Nash, those were my guys. But I can acknowledge those greats and say they were incredible while also acknowledging that that version of the NBA as a whole was not as refined or as good as it is today. Mm. Now, will I be able to make that distinction in 20 years when some snot-nosed brat tells me my glorious king was trash? <laughs> I'm not so sure. Get Spectrum yeah. One with internet oh for $49.99, plus free advanced Wi-Fi and a free unlimited mobile line. So what are we thinking, man? It sounds like Jimmy Harroller is spitting some solid points right now. I gotta, gotta agree with what he's saying, man, for sure. Because... With all the truth being said, so far, I think a lot of people just don't really appreciate what we've got going on. We'll just keep checking it out. Now, it's time to once and for all take a real close look at this accusation that Michael Jordan did not have a left hand. I felt like I was having a bad dream when I first saw this claim. 
but unfortunately, the people are crazy. I was not. Like, y'all are crazy. Like, cause if we do this crazy generational leap thing, Michael Jordan is like OD. You know what I'm saying? If he plays today, like it's OD. Like, cause if y'all talk about Anthony Edwards being like Michael Jordan and Anthony Edwards is not regarded as a top five, maybe not even a top 10 player in the NBA today. And you don't know how dominant Michael Jordan was? Bro, Michael Jordan be OD. He be OD. I feel like no one actually like, believed. He was also like one of the first people really with that mindset that came in. Like, well, like, 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 for example, like Kobe. Imagine, imagine Kobe Bryant. Bro, these guys today are getting up 25 shots a game. I'm a shit. I'm a shit. Imagine Kobe Bryant. Leaves this. This is just some high level trolling. But in an effort to stop this nonsense from spreading any further, I have no it's choice but to easy. take these accusations seriously. So I selected eight random games ranging from Michael Jordan's rookie season all the way up to the mid 90s and play by play gathered all of his possessions throughout these games, charted That's when he went to his right, when he went to his left, and There's what those possessions resulted in. And here is what I found. Jordan made a move with his left hand or his right hand 227 times. Of those 227 moves, 121 of them were with his right Which hand and expect. 106 of them were with his left hand. Like I talked about in another video, there's a video where Boris Diaw literally talks about how he doesn't think he shot a, right, a left-handed shot over the course of his career. But if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We have left-handed guys that are strictly left-handed. But no one makes a big deal. And that's today. We have, with this hyper-skilled era, we have guys that are literally uh, relegated to their left hand. But we don't say anything about it. So, okay. Of the 121 right-handed moves, he passed up or got fouled on 54 of them. So I didn't bother charting those. Okay. 65 of these moves resulted in a shot, in which he made 63% of them and only turned the ball over two times. Right. Now, moves that he made with his left hand resulted in a pass or him getting fouled 45 times, mm -hmm. while 55 of these left-handed moves ended up in a shot, in which he made 51%, and six moves resulted in a turnover. So, so the math is for some left, which you would do for any right-handed player, the vice versa for any left-handed player, you would force them to the weekend. So. Based on this data, Jordan was definitely more comfortable going right, especially near the rim and even on mid-range jumpers. He struggled a bit in comparison to his right whenever he pulled up off of a left-handed dribble. But overall, Jordan went to his left 47% of the time. And although it was his weaker hand, he was still above league average even while going to his left. Right, right, right. But eight games in 350 minutes of basketball is a relatively small sample size. So I looked into it further and oh found this. Gosh. A detailed breakdown of Michael Jordan's shot chart and shot tendencies in three seasons from 1990 to 1992. 126 games and over 4,800 minutes in total tracking exactly what Michael did on the court for three seasons. And here's what the data shows. In total, Michael made 1,074 moves in isolation going either to his right or to his left hand. 48% of those moves were with his right hand and 52% of those moves were with his left hand. When going to the right, Michael shot 61.7% on 410 shots with 15 turnovers, resulting in 1.38 points per possession. When going to his left, Michael shot 61.3% on 421 shots with 36 turnovers, resulting in 1.31 points per possession. So even with a much larger sample size, Michael not only had a left hand, he went to it just as often as he went to his right and was nearly as proficient with his left as he was with his right. Now, for some context, throughout this three-year span, Michael made, on average, 4.4 left-handed isolation moves, or in this case, isolation possessions, that resulted in 1.31 points per possession. Now, here are some prolific scores from this season and their overall tendencies and efficiency in isolation. Keep in mind, this data includes both right-handed and left-handed moves from these players. And now here is Michael Jordan with just his left hand. So, uh, yeah. I'd say contrary to what has now become popular belief, Michael Jordan had a left hand.
and I cannot believe we had to dig into the data to come to this conclusion. You look crazy. I think the true discourse should be had, it's just like what Jimmy Highroller says, you can talk about the talent and skill gap, but you have to, you have, by doing that, you have to address the type of players play style that was also in the NBA. Which I, I, I that's always been the, my same argument. I think so the I overall agree. idea that the 80s and 90s were a far less skilled time in the NBA compared to today is probably fair. I mean, you'd be crazy to think the game hasn't evolved in four decades. But to say the league was trash back then is just wrong. I think more than anything, it's the style of play and the way basketball games would unfold back then that really throws some fans off when they go to watch film of these old games. It's like Ooh. looking at a box score from the mid 2000s and thinking everyone sucked because the games finished with final scores in the 80s. Mm -hmm. But the players weren't bad, it was just a different game back then. Right. It was slower, more methodical, more team and scheme based than it is right. today. And yeah, similarly, I think you could say the buckets. 80s and 90s had its fair share of bad basketball. But that doesn't mean all the players were bad, especially the superstars of those eras. That was just the state of the game they were playing in. I think some older fans have a skewed- It's the same argument. Like, you can, you can watch college games today, you can have a star player on one team, and maybe a solid second guy, and then you can have three other role players. A, a big that just blocks shots, or a big that just fouls and rebounds. You can have a guy that just dives on the floor, plays defense. And you can have a shooter. You don't necessarily need to have a super stacked squad of five. Like you see in the NBA nowadays. But people will ignore stuff like that. Like it's not still basketball. Like, like I, I agree. Like for example, the college game is still a lot more team oriented. And you don't necessarily need a lot of the facets that we look at in the pro game. Where like we're looking at all these guys who are big time scorers. All uh, sharing the same court. We, we, we still have plenty of role players available in college but like i said people ignore stuff like that perception of how good the game was back then but i also think they just genuinely liked that style of ball regardless of the evolution of the league yeah. in 20 years there could be a dozen players around the league that shoot like steph curry mm -hmm. but i doubt we will hold the same appreciation right, 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 and affinity right, right. for those players as we did to the guy who pioneered this style of play and did it during the good old days. In the 90s, no one looked back at how the league was in the 60s claiming it was better. And so realistically, we shouldn't be looking back at the 80s and 90s claiming the league was superior than it Shout is today, to or even just as good for that matter. A lot of these ideas that favor modern basketball are becoming more mainstream as fans dive deeper into these topics and add context to narratives that have been floating around for decades. But I think this push to be done with the 80s and 90s is a bit overkill. We want to add context and nuance twice. and knowledge to these discussions, not remove entire decades from it altogether. Sadly, I don't think any of this has or will change anyone's mind. This revolt against old school ball was either confirmation of what you already thought, or this entire discussion is just blasphemy to you. Are we done with the 80s and 90s? Maybe, but for the sake of the game and the greats that paved the way, I sure hope not. Hey, very, 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 very good video. Of course, usually from Jimmy High Roller. Um, he actually has some solid discourse in the comments. Only, uh, only uh, Jimmy High Roller would be able to do this. MLB fans have done the 90s. Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire were hitting against plumbers. Yeah, modern NBA fans did actually chill out and show reverence to the guys that made the game popular. Yeah. I'm 44 and I understand how all the younger cats feel because I used to feel the same when I was a kid about the players from the 60s and 70s. I remember arguing with my dad when he said how good Will Chamberlain and Julius Erick, Pistol PJ West, and all the other times were. I didn't think that was a puzzle because players only got better players are stronger than what they do, but I'm so older and I have better understanding of it now. Doesn't matter what era they play, the superior athletes would adapt no matter what time they are playing in. I just surprised the people from the you say forget to layer foreign players that have had a far bigger. You know, you want to bring this caveat in here. Yeah, the, the way the dude says we done with the 90s is mad funny. Uh, 
Yeah, shout out to Jimmy, bro. What do y'all think? Are we still done with the 90s?